So as you guys notice, uh, right now your instance is, is still initializing. So you just keep on refreshing and just see if the instance is up and running or not. So just wait for a few minutes. Let's just refresh it once again. It's still initializing. Just wait, uh, well, it should be up and running soon. It's still creating that image right now, and you guys can see it in the status check as well. It is still initializing, so it usually takes like two three minutes for it to complete the processing. Okay, it's ready to go for you now and you guys can see the status now how it is uh, showing right now so it is running now we have to do a couple of more things before we get this instance actually up and running you guys need to go to download two tools that I'm gonna tell you right now the first tool is uh, putty gen uh, so this is the tool that you need uh, putty gen to generate your private key for this particular session. So go ahead and download this uh, putty gen. Uh, you can go to this website uh, on winsip.net uh, and you can just go and download, click on the download and you should see the putty gen site over here. There you go. Just, this is what you need. Uh, putty gen portable executable file as well as a putty installation so these are the two things that you need to download before you continue running this instance okay now let's learn how to generate our private key for this instance okay so first of all i'm going to open up a putty gen so once you install this app it will look something like this okay now what you will do is make sure you select uh, SSRSA is fine. Just click load and select the .pem extension that you just downloaded. Okay. So go to the desktop. I have stored it on my desktop. 
and this is the file with .pem extension click ok click ok and save private key that's what you need to click yes and linux instance private key yeah just save this thing on your desktop or anywhere in a safe location so you have now converted as you know we created the instance with the ssh a enable so it will work from any ip address with the ssh protocol okay now what we will do is go to the putty okay now let's just see the ip address of our computer that you just created right this is my public dns so copy this public dns open your putty okay just click over there and just go to the ssh select the authentication and over here browse your private key so go to the desktop select this linux instance private key click open okay now just go to the session and just save your session as my linux instance okay save it and then load it so all set we have set up the instance we have created linux instance we have downloaded the pem file we have generated the private key we have installed a putty we have configured the private key for this so now we are going to just launch this instance so click open and you will see some alert like this one so just click yes and it will show you your login prompt now there is something important to understand with linux right what you have to do is uh, just go in here and uh, I'm going to also share this as a notes. These are the user IDs. If you use the Amazon Linux AMI, you need to use EC2 user. If you use the Ubuntu, then you need to use the Ubuntu or the root account. For CentOS, you use the CentOS user ID. For Fedora, you use the EC2 user. For SUS, you use the EC2 user. So for us, it is the Amazon AMI. So we're gonna go with the EC2 user. So open up your command prompt and just log in as EC2 user. There you go. So now you are logged in into the Linux instance of uh, your of, from Amazon. Now let's just run some command to see who am I. That's my EC user. Okay, you can just also see the directory structure. You are currently into the home directory for this particular user. Let's create a one directory. Hello world sample directory. Okay, so you created the directory as well. Just list this and you can see the directory as well. Your hello world something let's go ahead and create a sample file inside this directory right now we don't have it is the empty directory so there is nothing we will go ahead and create a sample file right sample file dot txt click escape and then press i so you can insert some this is test file Again, do escape colon and save the file with wq command. So just click enter and now do ls minus l. There you go. So your file is showing up right now as sample file.txt. You can also review the context using the help, uh, get command, right? Uh, sample file.txt and you can see that whatever are the file contents you can see it over here uh, so 
hope that makes sense now let's just come out of this directory again do ls minus l so it is just one directory you can use a remove command to remove the directory and it is cannot remove it's a directory okay so r m t i r hello world okay clear screen so now you are logged in into the amazon linux instance it has already java and everything installed for you it is pre-configured ami for you you are using the ssh to log into this instance your port 22 is open right and that's the only reason why you can connect it from this particular instance now let's look at the management console and see how it is running right now yeah. so there you go as you guys can see it it is a linux instance that's the key name i have used i have launched it at 4 21 pm this is my security group i am using right and you can see all the details for this security group as well now for example tomorrow uh, you know i need to edit this inbound rules right and I want to add some more rules so that I can accept some more connections from the other sources. For example, SMTP protocol. So you can just say, I want to allow all the inbound rules for the SMTP protocol from this particular IP address. So you can just mark it as save, and that's good enough. Okay. You can go to the outbound rules and do the same thing. You can prevent the traffic also going from outside the world so you can just say that i just want outbound world or just for like http that's it so right now it is set up as all the traffic can go outside from all the port ranges to any destination but if you are working in a very sensitive area such as a government organization or for your internal company you don't want all the connections to go outbound maybe you just want to allow http and some other port so that you can communicate with the other servers but not everything outbound so your computer will will talk to someone else computer because this is enabled it can even send out a data to some other computer so you want to avoid that so whatever things you want to set you can just right now it's all traffic but that is not advisable so you can update that yeah. now let's look at the volume structure as well the way the volume looks right now as you guys notice i just have one volume and again i don't have any names added to this one so i'm just gonna add it as linux instance that's the name of the volume it is currently in use it was created on april 14 monitoring is not done it is and en not encrypted volume status is okay and you created the volume in east 1a so this volume is available under east region so let's talk about uh, the status here also that it shows the status to volume status is okay io status is enable auto enable just that's fine it's enable it is availability zone is 1a so all the things are tracked for you now when you go to the monitoring for this particular volume you can see the bandwidth for the read bandwidth how it looks right now for the write bandwidth how you are writing right uh, right throughput read latency it shows a different different charts so that you can figure it out all the io related operations okay just go to the instance one more time and you can do the same thing select this instance and go to monitoring so you can see all the things for cpu use utilization right now only two percent is being utilized you can change the period as well to one day and you will notice that is nothing out there so just do one hour and you can see this okay now you can do all sorts of things disk rates disk write. so this is more for monitoring purpose network how many network bytes are going out how many networks are by in uh, status check you can do all sorts of things so let's just recap what we did we created a linux instance using amazon ami uh, we downloaded the dot pem files and then we created a private key using a putty we use a putty to log in into this server 
right? And this is my Linux instance that's also created right now. I use a easy, easy, easy user to log into this. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching this video.